and welcome to Edinburgh Napier MBA webinar. My name is Helen Spiropoulos. I'm the admissions manager at Stafford Global. And joining me this evening all the way from the UK is Dr. Kiran. Uh, good evening to you, Dr. Kiran. How are you this evening? Good evening, Helen. I'm good. I'm glad to be here with you all. Good. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm sure everything is uh, quite cold and chilly out on, on your side. Yeah, we have we have snow right now, or a little bit of snow right now, so it's uh, it's a bit chilly. <laughs> We're looking That's forward okay. to the weather. Fantastic, good. Okay, so I'm looking here on my right hand side, and I can see quite a lot of you have joined us um, from the Middle East as well as in Africa, and uh, I can also see Canada, which is actually very good. Thank you so much uh, again for joining us. All right, so how we are going to conduct the webinar this evening is I'm just going to briefly introduce you to Stafford Global. I'm then going to hand you over to Dr. Kiran, who is going to uh, take you through the program, um, chat a little bit about that. And right at the end of the presentation, you will have the ability to type out any questions that you would like to ask me or Dr. Kiran. Um, uh, Dr. Kiran will obviously look more at the academic uh, questions and I will look more on the ad, um, administration as well as the registration and application questions. I am going to be looking at these questions quite carefully because a lot of them are identical. Um, so I am going to start grouping them together. So please do listen out for that question and answer. Okay, so let's get started. Now, who is Stafford Global? Now, Stafford Global was established in 1993 and we are a resource center for five UK universities, one of which is Edinburgh Napier University. Now, we do offer a variety of programs ranging from certificates to diplomas, uh, MBAs, right through until doctorates. So we really do have all the programs for your personal and your professional needs. Now, the mere fact that you are here with us this evening means that you have been in touch with one of our experienced academic consultants. And our aim here at Stafford Global is to assist you throughout the application process and ensure that you get that very, very important unconditional offer. We also do offer some administrative as well as academic support. Okay, so I'm now going to hand you over to Dr. Kiran and I am going to join you towards the end of the webinar. Over to you. Thanks, Helen, and uh, thank you everyone for attending. It's, it's really a pleasure to be here to talk to you all about the Global Online MBA, which I am the program leader of. So my name is Dr. Kiran McFadden Young, uh, and I will take you through the academic structure of the program, talk a little bit about the entry requirements and what you can expect on the Global Online MBA. Uh, First of all, let's talk a little bit about Edinburgh, so the city that uh, I don't live in anymore, but I used to live in for four years, uh, where, where in uh, Edinburgh Napier is uh, situated. So Edinburgh has been voted the best UK city for the past three years. It's a great place to live, it's a great place to work, um, and it's a great place to work because there's a lot of different companies um, compared to, for example, any other city, apart from, say, London in the UK, we're home to more FTSE 100 and tech startup companies and some fintech, there's a fintech uh, financial technology sector here in Edinburgh as well, uh, more than, than any other UK city outside London. It's also home to the largest arts festival in the world. So we have a fintech sector, we have those, uh, those tech startup companies, uh, and we have the largest arts festival. You might have heard of the Edinburgh uh, Arts Festival and Edinburgh Fringe Festival largest festivals in the world and uh, every August, the uh, apart from this August, uh, last August and this August coming, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, uh, we have a lot of people from around the world. Some of you might have been to Edinburgh during the August festival. So what that means for you as, as students or potential students on the Global Online MBA is that we have uh, lecturers who are very, very well versed in talking to fintech companies who might have worked in some fintech or technology or uh, festival companies. If you're, for example, looking at events management, you will have some lecturers who have worked on events in Edinburgh. So one of the best places for practitioners to really hone their craft and be able to develop their skills that they can then pass on to you. So we have over 19,000 students from more than 130 countries. Um, of that, about two thirds are studying on campus in Edinburgh. 
Uh, 6,000 of them are studying at partner universities worldwide and online. We have uh, students in China, we have students uh, in uh, Barbados, we have students in Hong Kong and in Singapore. Um, it's a very well-oiled machine when it comes to studying online with Edinburgh Napier. There's a lot of resources and there's a very definite um, structure and infrastructure in place uh, to allow you to hit the ground running as a global online MBA student all those resources and supports are going to be in place and you won't be the only student studying online. Far from it, there's going to be thousands of others who will be studying online as well. So in terms of views on Edinburgh Napier, so how do we rank and how do we compare, for example, uh, to other institutions that you might be thinking of when you're looking to develop your MBA education? So we're a number one million plus modern university for business management uh, and that's in the Complete University Guide in 2020. We're a top five UK modern university for accounting and finance, if anyone's interested in taking uh, an accountant and finance route. We're a top 10 UK modern university for marketing, if anyone's interested in the MBA in marketing. Uh, we're a top ranked Scottish modern university and a top 10 UK modern university for business. So that tells you that our, our business school and our, uh, the, the components within that are very well ranked in the UK. In the 2019 National Student Survey, my group, the HRM Subject Group, we received 100% student satisfaction. And because of that, we were ranked number one in the UK out of all institutions in the UK that offer human resource management as a subject. Uh, we have five QS stars for teaching, employability, and internationalization. Uh, employability, I think, is an important one there because uh, that's uh, over 95% of students um, we're in full-time work after uh, six months um, post-graduation. So that's where we are. Uh, we have five QS stars for employability. Our students are very employable post-graduation. And we're top 10 in the UK for graduate employability again. Uh, and we have HR Excellence in Research Award from the European Commission. And the business school ranked uh, uh, at a result of 84% student satisfaction in the National Student Survey 2019. And we're waiting on the results of the uh, of the, the current survey, which is, is, is live at the moment. So all in all, Edinburgh Napier University, it's a, it's a global university. It's a, a very well ranked in the UK and abroad. Uh, and we, again, have that infrastructure, uh, no matter what subjects that you're, that you're looking at, we have that infrastructure to allow you to hit the ground running and to really develop a, a good MBA education that will add on to your employability uh, and to your future career success. So let's talk a little bit about the MBA structure. And you might know already that there's a couple of different MBA routes that we offer. Uh, but I'll talk first about the MBA, uh, the general MBA structure. And from then we can start to, to look at the other routes. So the general MBA has these four modules, uh, these four core modules at the start. So management and organizational change, leading strategic decision-making, marketing and building high-performing organizations, and global business economics and finance. If you were taking the general MBA route, you would take these two extra ones in blue, managing innovations and contemporary issues in strategic management. No matter what MBA you're taking, you will then do research skills for managers uh, after you've completed the, your first six modules. And then after that, you will do the MBA project. So talking a little bit about the modules themselves before I go on to the different routes. So no matter what MBA you're doing, you will do these four core modules, as I said. So management and organizational change. It's an important topic for any organization, not just when we're talking about a pandemic, not just when we're talking about, for example, a merger or downsizing in a recession. Uh, change is a constant. It's somewhat uh, paradoxical, but change is a constant in every organization. You are always hoping growing or expanding, bringing on new people, or maybe you might actually be downsizing or changing into a new territory, market, product, or service. So change is always a constant. Uh, how do you, as a manager and as a future business leader, manage that change? How do you inspire people to come along with you in that change? Um, how do you put in place the systems and processes that are needed to enact that change? And how, again, do you get that motivation from those that you're leading uh, to, 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 to have, have that change happen? Leading strategic decision-making is a combination module, really. Um, it's a combination of leadership, which I teach, uh, and strategic decision making, which is which is our, what our colleagues from the strategy department teach. So not only are you looking at the strategy and how you make a good strategy, uh, you construct a good strategy that you know uh, defends yourself against threats, that exploits opportunities, looks at barriers to entry into new markets, uh, and really coming up with a road plan for your organization. Not only are you doing that in this module, you're also talking about how you lead that. So again, 
how you as a leader can lead that change, that new strategy within the organization and bring people along with you. Marketing and, high, and building high performing organizations is a dual module as well. So we have a bit of marketing and then we have a bit of entrepreneurship. So the building high performing, performing organizations, how do we build a HBO? And then once it's built, how do we market it uh, in, in a global sense? Global business economics and finance, we're looking uh, at the organizational levels. So we're talking about the financial decision making that you would do uh, as a part of the day to day of any running of, uh, of an organization. Uh, but then linking that to the global business and economic environment. So, for example, um, you know, we will we will uh, make decisions, financial decisions within organizations differently depending on whether we're in a recession, whether we're in a lockdown, uh, or whether we're in a in, in a in a high a high market, a good economy. So, linking that business environment, global business environment, to our individual organization. The two modules here that make the MBA general route its general route is managing innovation and contemporary issues in strategic management. How do you manage innovation in an organization? Innovation isn't just for organizations like Facebook or Google or anything like that. It's for any organization that wants to survive and that sells a product, develops a product or service as well. So how do we manage that? How do we encourage innovation in our processes within our organizations or within our service, uh, service uh, or product development? Contemporary issues in strategic management then is about looking at those issues that are going on right now. So this module uh, is very, very current and looks at the modules that are happening in the year that it's, it's taking place. So for example, one contemporary issue in strategic management right now might be the rollout of the vaccine for the pandemic. And that's a strategy issue as well as a logistics issue. As I said, those two modules make up the core MBA route. Uh, and those are the two modules in blue that will be swapped with other modules depending on what route you look at and we'll go into that in a little second. After you've done those six modules, so you generally do two modules per trimester, after you do those for those six modules then you're ready to take the research skills for manager modules, managers module and that's really about um, prepping you to be able to undertake a research project as a manager um, giving you skills in, for example, qualitative research, quantitative research, so looking at statistics and statistical diagrams, as well as interview, interview data and uh, focus group data. How do you analyze those different types of data sets? So this is one module that I teach on. Uh, and after that, so you, you completed your research skills for managers, you are well grounded in all the different aspects of the MBA uh, route, then you can decide on your MBA project. And this is an individual standalone project that you will undertake. Uh, based solely on what you are interested in and what can add to your career and your employability. So I have seen students who have uh, used their MBA project uh, both in the educational sense in that they're you know they're using it to, to get their MBA degree uh, but also in a career sense in that they might be studying something in their organization that their boss has said hmm, that that's a really interesting topic or a really interesting question or an interesting problem that we need to have solved. Uh, and so they, they've kind of dual, uh, dualized that, uh, that project. But it's whatever you're interested in, and you can, uh, part of that is about data collection. So you can do quantitative data collection, where you do a survey or a questionnaire, um, hopefully with hundreds of respondents, or you can do qualitative data collection, where you do interviews or focus groups um, with uh, smaller numbers of, of uh, respondents, but you go more in depth into the topics. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the different routes in a second, but I just want to talk briefly about the exit points. Now, hopefully we'll we'll hope that you will stay with us up, up until the MBA, uh, but there are exit points throughout the, uh, the MBA that you can exit with particular different awards. So if you've taken an individual uh, module, so that's 20 credits, so each of these, uh, each of these uh, modules except for the MBA project is 20 credits, the MBA project is 40 credits. If you take an individual module, then uh, which will be one of these, then you will carry. You will get an award for that. It'll say uh, you, you'll be able to say on your CV that you have taken a module in leading strategic decision making, for example. If you do three of those modules, so you get 60 credits. So you take, for example, MOC, LSDM, and uh, MBHPO. You will get a postgraduate certificate because you have achieved 60 credits. If you do 120 credits, so that's everything. Uh, all of these six modules without the research skills for managers and without the MBA project. So you do all the, these, uh, these uh, sit down modules without do doing the actual uh, research modules, you'll get a postgraduate diploma. And then lastly then what makes it an MBA is that when you have those extra 60 credits that brings you up to 180 credits, 
and shows that you've done a research project and you are a qualified researcher. So that's the MBA general route. And as I said, these modules in blue will be swapped with other modules depending on what route you take. So let's look at the different routes. So the specialized modules. So for example, if you wanted to do the MBA in banking here up in the top, you would take instead of managing innovation and contemporary issues in strategic management, you would take global finance and financial markets, institutions and banking. So that's one of the key things and one of the key characteristics and one of the key USPs, selling points of the Edinburgh Napier MBA online is that you can really customize it to whatever industry you're in. So for example, maybe you're in the hospitality industry and you want to, uh, you want to hone your skills on that, you want to get an MBA, but you also want to uh, characterize it and uh, develop it around your hospitality education. Well, then you can take the MBA hospitality and tourism management. Again, like I mentioned, You'll be, you'll be uh, getting the expertise of people who have worked in hospitality and tourism management through the Edinburgh Festival, for example. And in that case, you take contemporary issues in hospitality management and you take international business event management along with these first four modules. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, but I'll leave this up for a second just so you can see well, what am I most interested in? Is it about finance? Is it about health management? Is it, I, you know, I'm in HR, HRM or I'm in a HR department right now and I want to get an MBA, but I also want to focus on HR study. Maybe it's about leadership. You see yourself as a future business leader uh, and you want to really hone your, your uh, business leadership skills. Talking about those proper processes and people management uh, skills. So have a look at that and think about what are you most interested in. And this is all online as well, and you can get access to this on the Edinburgh Napier and Stafford Global websites. So the ENU Global Online Programs, how do they work? Well, they're 100% online. We have developed these with you in mind in terms of uh, we expect that you're maybe working full time. Um, you're obviously not in Edinburgh itself, uh, and you're in it globally across the world and you want to be flexible in terms of how you study for this MBA degree. And that's how we have designed the program. So it's 100% online. There are no in-person lectures or tutorials or anything like that, 100% online. It's also asynchronous. What we mean by asynchronous, it's kind of an education term. Basically, it just means that the lecturer and the learners aren't in the same space. So that could be, in this case, a virtual space at the same time. So it's asynchronous. It's not synchronized where the lecturer and the learners have to be in the classroom, the virtual classroom at the same time. It's asynchronous. So what happens is the lecturer or the tutor will upload uh, materials, lecture materials and learning materials, and you will uh, you will follow that in your own time. So in that way, it's flexible. You study at a time, a place and a pace that suits your personal and professional demands. So for example, if you're working full time, you might want to uh, look at a lecture uh, on your lunch break or maybe directly after work or maybe in the evening or something like that, whatever suits you. Um, you can do it all on the Saturday, for example, um, if you don't work on Saturdays, of course. Uh, we have high quality materials where they're engaging, they're interactive, and obviously they're self-directed. So you are the person who is directing this learning journey. We have truly international student experience. As I said, it's a global online MBA. We have students from all around the world um, who are inputting and uh, learning from this global online MBA. We have three intakes per year, January, May, and September. Again, it's flexible, it's flexible and it suits whenever uh, suits your own career and your own learning goals. In terms of assessment, and this is always a worry for, for students on any program, uh, but we have a, a somewhat, uh, somewhat characteristic or somewhat uh, different assessment on the Global Online MBA. So you'll be provided with both formative feedback and summative assessments. Formative feedback means feedback um, perhaps um, talking about your assessments and saying, well, maybe you could do this or maybe you could look at this a bit differently. Um, constructive feedback from your global online tutor. You also have summative assessments and that are, those are the assessments that contribute towards your final module mark. So for every module, you have an end of unit progress test. So that's 10 academic units with online questions at the end of each unit. And this is going to test your knowledge and understanding of the key concepts within each unit. So each module is broken into a unit and you will have some uh, online questions at the end. And that's really just to monitor your own progress and say, well, do I need to go back and learn something a bit more with that? It counts as only 10% of your final module mark. I say it's a summative assessment, but it's really about you and, and how you can uh, figure out how well you're doing in this module. At the end of each module, then you have an end of module assessment. So that's 90% of the final module mark. 
Uh, and that will differ from module to module. In some modules, um, naturally because of what, what you're, you're studying will differ. Uh, some modules you might have to do an essay, so other modules you might have to do a consultancy report or consultancy style report. Other ones, uh, for example, a finance module, you might have to do a financial analysis. So that's 90% of your final module mark. Assessments will be undertaken on, on, online and these will be described in the approved module descriptor. So if there's anyone that you're not so sure about, you can uh, look them up on, on a search engine. You can just, you can just Google the, uh, um, or Bing, whatever it is, um, the module itself and you will see the module descriptor online and that'll tell you all you need to know about the learning outcomes and the different types of assessment that are used. So there's no exams you'll notice in these modules. And that's because, again, we're asynchronous and we're flexible. We don't require all the students to be in the same virtual room as the lecturer or as the exam invigilator or anything like that. These module assessments, you will have a deadline, but you can do that module assessment in your own time. And as part of the quality assurance process, module leaders will sample a number of these summative assessments and portfolios, and they'll check that the work submitted or undertaken is actually that of matriculated students. So obviously I don't need to tell you all, but uh, you, know, you are advised that if there's any questions regarding the authorship, that will be sent to the academic conduct officer at Edinburgh Napier University. Uh, we have very, very strict policies regarding plagiarism or passing off someone else's work as your own. Okay, so that's about the assessment. So as I said, you will have formative feedback from your global online tutors, but you'll also have those summative assessments. Each module you'll have a 10% final, uh, 10% uh, unit of the kinds of 10% of your final module mark, and then you'll have a final module assessment, and that's worth 90% of your final module mark. So nothing to worry about. It's all in your own time. It's all asynchronous, and thankfully, no exams, which is always good to hear. So in terms of the trimester and module outcomes, so our academic year at Edinburgh Napier is divided into three trimesters of 13 weeks each. So we have trimester one, January to April, which we're in right now. Uh, and within that, you would take, for example, module one, module two. Trimester two is May to August. So anyone thinking about applying for the next deadline, you'll be starting in May in trimester two. So you'll be doing your first two modules in, in the May to August uh, trimester. You go on then to trimester three, the next two modules, uh, and then uh, the, the dates are somewhat uh, off here, but you'll see the, what, what I mean. Uh, the last, uh, sorry, your fourth trimester, then you'll do your research skills for managers. So only one module that trimester. And then the fifth trimester, then that's when you'll do your dissertation project. That's worth 40 credits, which is worth 20, uh, which is worth two modules. And that kind of reflects the amount of time and energy you'd be putting into that dissertation project. It is roughly the same as doing two modules um, using lecture materials. So in terms of the individual trimesters then, in week one, you'll have access to the module materials on the virtual learning environment. We use the virtual learning environment Moodle, which some of you might be familiar with. Uh, you have online induction and then you'll commence your studies. From weeks two to 12, you'll study on the different modules. And then week 13, the very last week of each trimester, you'll be submitting your final assignments. So you can see you have those two to 12, the weeks two to 12 to actually work on that module assignment. In terms of entry requirements and fees, well, we have uh, an entry requirement of an honours degree at two, two or above, plus two years relevant work experience, because we are, we are obviously a professional practical programme. Uh, it's an MBA, so we require two years of relevant work experience. Now for, for example, some of you might have um, a postgraduate certificate, but you have a lot of work experience on top of that. Comparable alternative qualifications or professional qualifications or relative work experience may also be considered. So if you don't have an honours degree to do above and, and, and that two years relevant work experience, but for example, you have a postgraduate diploma or certificate and 10 years work experience or five years work experience, then that, that is something we will consider as well. Um, and that's at the discretion of the head of the MBA programmes. Um, but we'll certainly engage in a conversation with you. And you should also talk to your Stafford a uh, global personal consultant about those entry requirements. The alternate, alternative to the MBA for those without relevant work experience um, is, for example, if you just finished your honours degree and you haven't yet got um, uh, work experience, you can undertake the MSc in business management, which starts, uh, your next start would be in September. We also start in January for that. If your first language is not English, you need to provide evidence demonstrating that you can conduct yourself in English. For example, a previous degree in English would prove that you, you can conduct yourselves in English or the results of uh, one of those common English language tests as well. 
For more information on your English requirements, you can contact your Stafford Global Personal Consultant. Uh, again, a personal call, consultation there about your own particular uh, requirements uh, and competencies. So the application deadline, uh, we have a rough deadline of around the 1st of May for 2021 for the May start. And for information on your fees, I'll direct you again to your Stafford Global Personal Consultant. So if you have any questions, we'll take some questions now, but if you have any questions, uh, you think about some uh, tonight or tomorrow, then do feel free to email either myself uh, or the ENU Global Online Support Team or Helen as well at staff. So thank you, Helen. Excellent. Thank you so much, Kieran. Um, that was very, very informative. And I do have quite a few questions that I've already started grouping together. Okay, a question from uh, Jamie. Um, is there a possibility of changing my course speciality? So, for example, if I'm applying for HRM stream, but then I can see that one of the courses in the leadership stream is more suited for me, can I actually change? And the question then further goes, when can I do the change? Mm -hmm. So we will definitely consider changes and it'll be up to the individual circumstances of that student. So for example, if you have, uh, remember these two modules here are, you will take them after the four other modules. So you'll only do the specialist modules uh, in trimester three. So if you're in trimester one and trimester two and you are completing these modules, which are core to all the different MBA streams, then we could absolutely consider that you change, for example, from banking to hospital, hospitality and tourism management, because you won't yet have done these modules, these specialist modules. So absolutely, we can consider that. The only time when we couldn't consider that is, for example, if you've started on the MBA banking and you've completed, for example, the global finance module. It wouldn't really happen in, in any case in the way that uh, the, the timetable works out. Um, but for example, if you've done one of these modules and you wanted then to change to do something like a dual specialism, we can actually allow that. You have one specialism in the, in the MBA online. Okay, and a question from uh, Inko Loco, and I'm, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, can I take a break? So for example, if I start my program in May and I do my first module, can I then take a break? And if so, how long does that break last for? Mm -hmm. So we do allow you to suspend your studies. Um, I think the maximum suspension of studies, you have to correct me here if I'm wrong, Hal, but I think that the, the maximum suspension of studies is usually three trimesters. However, with everything going on right now, we are a little bit more flexible in that. But you can definitely sus suspend your studies. If you wanted to suspend your studies for one to two trimesters, that wouldn't be an issue. We we often have students who, who need to do that for personal or financial reasons. So that's no that's no worries. That's correct, correct. And and Sandra, and I think I'm, I'm very aware of, of Sandra, if I'm not mistaken, I think Sandra has already started the program this quarter. Uh, correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong, Sandra, but Sandra's question is, can I change from two modules to one module in a semester if I find that it's too much work to get through? Uh, we usually consider that you would, um, I think the, we haven't had that happen a lot, but we would, I think we would consider it. Um, it might be that you would be, you know, refunded the fees for one module, depending on where you are in the trimester. If we've only just started, we're in week one or week two uh, or week three, then that shouldn't be an issue. If we're going towards kind of halfway through the trimester, um, then that may, might be more of an issue then. You might not be able to get the fees refunded then. Um, for that module. So I would talk to your Stafford Global consultant and also talk to the Global Online Support Team and they will have quick access to the regulations and they can tell you that time, that deadline by which you can you can change from two modules to one um, just as soon as possible. That's correct, yes. Um, so do try and get in touch uh, with us all with um, a Global Online Support as uh, Dr. Kieran has said and they'll be able to guard you accordingly. Okay, and how much is the workload for someone that is working full time and does have a family? Um, what do you recommend uh, the, the time that I should be spending on my program? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I suppose it depends on your own work ethic and, and how, you, um, how you engage with the program. We did design the Global Online MBA with people who are working full time and might have caring responsibilities in mind. So it is definitely achievable if you have those responsibilities and, and, and that work, uh, that full time work as well. Um, I think the the, the main uh, 
workload would really depend on how you want to chop up the time. I think uh, maybe one to two days a week worth, you know, maybe 10 hours a week uh, or 10 to 14 hours a week would probably be a legitimate um, or a kind of a realistic time frame. So that could be, you know, you could do a couple hours or an hour or two in the evening uh, and then maybe a couple hours on a Saturday or maybe you could dedicate the whole Saturday to it uh, where, when you're juggling uh, caring responsibilities as well. It is definitely achievable and it, I suppose it depends on your own particular um, circumstances for how many hours you want to focus on that. Remember as well, you'll have the assessment at the end of the module worth 90% of your module mark. Um, and that assessment will be made available to you very early on in the trimester. So you can dedicate time, you can chop up the time that you need to work on that assessment. We always say that you shouldn't leave the assessment to the last two or three weeks. You should wait uh, or you should you should start um, quite soon on that assessment. And th that helps you then to be more flexible in how you manage your time. Definitely should be achievable for someone who is working full time and has caring responsibilities. Absolutely, and very good advice there. Fantastic. I've got another question from Kenneth. Um, I have completed a few modules from another university and have been provided a postgraduate diploma. Will you be able to give me credits for what I have completed? So in that case, that would be a conversation that um, myself and, and someone from Stafford Global would, would have about the uh, exemptions that we could offer you. We do certainly offer exemptions in certain, certain circumstances. So for example, uh, well, the first thing we should do is that you should provide um, a copy of the learning outcomes and a copy of the program handbook to your Stafford Global Consultant and then they can pass that on to us. What we do then, what I do then, is look at the learning outcomes from each of the modules that you've completed and then compare that to the learning outcomes from the modules that you might get exemptions for. So for example, if you have done um, a module on leadership and strategy um, that isn't exactly the same, but it very much covers, for example, the material that is covered in leading strategic decision-making, that is when then we'd be able to give you an exemption for leading strategic decision-making. You wouldn't then have to do that. So it really depends on which course you've taken and which modules you've taken within that course or program. Uh, and then we can have that conversation and we can look at it on a case by case basis, but obviously we need you to provide that documentation to show which of these modules that you've done. Absolutely. And I'd love to just add there as well that if you are going to be looking for exemptions, um, I really do strongly advise that you submit your application as soon as possible. The earlier you submit it, um, the better chance it is for uh, Dr. Kieran and his team to actually thoroughly look through it. Um, do not leave it for that very last application deadline date um, because it, it might not be assessed in time for you to start the program. So do try and send these documents documents in as quickly as possible. Okay, so Fatima's question is, I have looked on your website and I can see that you're in the process of an ACSB accreditation. Um, can you let me know when this will be finalised? So at the moment, Phil, you're correct, we are in the middle of an ACSB accreditation. Um, for those of you who don't know, it's one of the uh, premier business school accreditations that would really put us up into the top top of a few, few percentiles of business schools in the world. Uh, we're fortunate enough or we're happy uh, that we have uh, completed the first stage of that accreditation in terms of the application inspection and we, it's been deemed that the application can definitely go ahead and we're they're now in the process of organizing what's called a site visit or a campus visit where the team from AACS, AACSB in Florida will come over to Napier and will um, assess uh, and have conversations with us in the, in the business school. So, we are somewhere at the, I would say, the first third of that process, and we're hoping to get that completed within the next year to year and a half. Uh, everything's a little bit thrown up in the air now because of the pandemic, and of course, they're, they're not able to come to, from Florida to see us, uh, but we are in the middle of that process at the moment, yes. Okay, good. Um, and then Mohammed's question is um, quite an interesting one. Once I have completed my MBA, how long after that will I be issued with my degree certificate? I am not entirely sure. That would depend on the program boards. It would depend on, first of all, what trimester you would um, you you'd be finishing in. We usually have, before um, anyone can be awarded an MBA, we have what are called program boards where everyone on the program meets to discuss uh, the results and to award, officially award the MBA. So you already know the results 
but it, we then just have to go through this process, this formal approval process of, of approving that award to be granted to you. Uh, and so those program boards usually happen at the end of the trimester, and then after that, then you will be um, given the opportunity to graduate at Usher Hall here in the photo uh, in Edinburgh, uh, and that is when you would usually get the degree transcript um, sometime either directly before or if you're not attending um, directly before the graduation or maybe um, after the, a couple of days after the graduation so usually if that happens a couple of months after your final uh, your final project is submitted right okay and just a follow-up question on that is will my degree certificate state online distance learning since we are studying this program uh, remotely no, so it won't say online distance learning. It'll be a Master's of Business Administration from Edinburgh Napier University. Uh, online learning won't be mentioned on the, the, the certificate itself. Okay, and a further question is regarding the tutors and the assistants. Um, I do understand that we are in the middle of COVID at the moment. How readily available are tutors to actually assist if they are not at the university? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, everyone in the in Edinburgh Napier University is working online. So, I'm in my in my dining room at the moment. We're all working online at the moment, uh, and global online tutors are used to that because they've always been working online. They've always been working with people uh, like you, prospective students, and then current students on the global online MBA. So, they're well used to managing. Um, their workload within that online environment and they're well used to discussing uh, issues with students over email, um, over Microsoft Teams for example or Skype um, or on, on Moodle or virtual learning environment. So you will, will hope to get um, feedback or um, your queries answered. Uh, we aim for two business days, um, a, 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 a timeline of two business days. So if you email on Monday, you should hear back either on the Tuesday or at la latest by the Wednesday from one of your global online tutors. Okay, if I do fail an assignment, um, do I get a second chance? And will I know exactly where I have gone wrong so that I can get a better result second time round? Yeah, that's a great question. So if you do fail an assignment um, for whatever reason, then you will be given a second chance to repeat that assignment to um, to uh, to uh, uh, submit it again. Uh, if you have, have failed an assignment because you have what we call extenuating circumstances, then you'll be given what we call like a free repeat. So um, you will you, you're uh, you'll be able to submit it again, and if you fail that, then you can resubmit it one more time. So you are able to resubmit once. Unless you have extenuating circumstances, then you're able to resubmit twice, really. So an extenuating circumstance could be something like, um, for example, this year, if yourself or your partner or one of your family was diagnosed with COVID and there's a lot of stress um, or there was um, hopefully not a bereavement um, from that, or if you were sick from a, in another sense, um, or something happened maybe in terms of your work or there's a work project that, that really demanded a lot of your time, these are the types of extenuating circumstances that we all uh, that we all allow if uh, on an individual case by case basis. Um, so if you have failed an assessment, it is not the end of the world. You will get the chance to resubmit that assessment. Um, to answer the second part of your question, you will also be given constructive feedback, um, whether you have failed it or not. So that this is just uh, the way that we work in Edinburgh Napier. Uh, you will have constructive uh, feedback on. on every assessment that you submit, um, what you've done well, where you've gone wrong, etc. So you will know exactly where you've gone wrong. And you can also talk to your global online tutor for further feedback if you so wish, if you need it. Excellent. Okay, and um, a question from Teboko. Um, is there any assistance from the university in helping me to secure a job in the UK once I have completed this program? So we do have a student futures um, uh, office and uh, I believe the global online students do have access to that. Uh, in terms of securing a job and visa arrangements, I don't think they go as far as that. Um, that will be a conversation with your prospective employer, but we do have um, some people there that can assist you in just directing you your job search and, and helping you um, figure out what you want to do, yes. Okay, and, and Lina's question is, um, I understand that the program can be done between 21 and 33 months. Is there any possibility that I can actually complete this program in 18 months? 
generally we wouldn't allow that because of the way that the workload um, is designed and um, that will be a discussion that you have to have with your with, with uh, myself the program leader and, um, and maybe your staff or global consultant as well that would be uh, very much on an individual case-by-case -case basis and it would be quite rare because again we don't recommend that you would take on that much work within such a short amount of time um, but it, you know it is a flexible degree so we are open to all discussions so if that is something that you wish to pursue, then you know have a conversation with your staff or global consultant and myself. Okay, and uh, if uh, COVID is over, can I actually visit the campus, even though I am a distance learning student? Can I visit the library or any other facilities? Yeah, so we'd be delighted to welcome you to the to the to the campus. Um, if, even though you are a global online student, you have access to those resources as well. So. Um, obviously, the library, all the da databases and, and a lot of textbooks are online anyway, so you can access them from anywhere in the world. But if there's some reason that you, that you wanted to come onto the campus and visit our really beautiful campus, then you can absolutely be welcome to. You can, uh, you can drop by for a coffee with myself. Okay, and uh, Eden's question is, uh, what is the maximum duration of the program? So how long do I really have to actually do this program? Mm -hmm. So the again, it is all up to the individual and, and how they are uh, managing the work, their work uh, load and the individual circumstances they find themselves in. Like we said in the previous question, um, there is an option to suspend your studies for a couple of trimesters. The uh, the average amount of time, the, the amount of time that's designed is for five trimesters. So that's uh, you know, so trimester one, two modules; trimester two, two modules; trimester three, uh, two modules. Trimester four, you do the one module, the, the research methods for manager, and then the last trimester, trimester five, uh, would be your uh, MBA project. Um, so, um, and again, it's all about managing your own workload. You might find that you, you know, you have an entire trimester to finish your project, but if you are very, very focused and you're able to uh, to execute that project really well, you might be able to finish that a little bit quicker than than is um, the time allocated. So, five trimesters in total is the average uh, the timeline. All right, and um, if I do not have a degree, but I do have at least um, four years uh, managerial work experience, will I be accepted on this program? Hmm. So I think that is a conversation we'd have to, I wouldn't be able to tell you that uh, just with that information, we'd have to actually look at that managerial experience uh, in more detail, uh, and then we'd have that conversation. But absolutely, it's. Um, there's no harm in applying and having that conversation with your staff or global consultant and then myself. Um, you know, we don't um, automatically turn away people. Good. Uh, Jay, um, I would love to see a copy of your CV because um, it also does depend if you have done any other professional qualifications as well. Uh, we do take that into consideration. Um, just as an average, the university may look at anything between eight and ten years with people that do not have um, any form of uh, qualifications. But please, as Dr. Kieran has said, um, we like to look at these cases on an individual basis. So please please do send us your CV and um, as well as any other uh, you know, qualifications that you may have done so we can advise you accordingly. Okay. Um, all right. And with regards to the English criteria, Dr. Kieran has also mentioned, please get in touch with us at Stafford. Again, we look at it individually. We look at your degree certificate. Um, we need to actually um, look at your application holistically so that we can advise you about the English requirements. Okay. Right. Um, I, I know that there is an induction at the beginning of every program. Is this important to attend? And what would happen if I do miss it? So, I mean, again, well, everything in the program is, is up to you in terms of your attendance and how you manage that workload and that flexibility. However, I would recommend that you definitely attend this induction just because it gives you the structure and the layout of Edinburgh Napier University and the facilities and resources that are available to you. So you don't want to leave this to the last moment where you're doing your, your, your final assessment for your first module and you realize I don't know how to access the library databases, for example. All those different things about the facilities and resources available at Edinburgh Napier University 
those are then shared with you um, during induction. Uh, and it'll teach you a little bit more about what's expected of you, about how to manage your workload, uh, and really getting in touch with other students on the program as well, because that's an important part of any MBA experience. So I would definitely recommend that you, that you uh, attend the induction. Okay, and uh, Lee's question is regarding the specializations. I have looked at your slide. that has got quite a lot of specializations. What happens if I'm interested in two? Can I take two specializations at the same time? A very popular question. We seem to get this quite often. Yeah, so like I said earlier, you wouldn't actually be able to do two specializations um, just because of the way that, you know it's a specialization. So we want you to specialize on one particular uh, one particular uh, um, specialism. So we will also ask as well, one thing that I should add is that depending on your special, specialism, you will have to do your MBA project based on that specialism. So um, if you're taking the MBA general route, you can take the MBA project on any topic that you want, whether it's from HRM or um, organizational behavior, leadership, um, uh, strategy, entrepreneurship, anything that you want to look at at all. If you're taking a specialism, so for example, if you're doing an MBA in human resource management, then we would expect that, or we would require that your your end of um, your MBA project looks at, an, at a HRM topic. Now within that HRM, HRM is a huge field, so you could look at human resource development, you could look at leadership, diversity, inclusion, which is what I teach, and um, you could look at anything within the HRM field, any any topic that that really catches your interest. Um, but it would have to be under that HRM banner. So uh, to answer your question, you can't do that specialism or two specialisms because you are very much specialised onto the one particular area or particular field of study. So um, if you're doing the MBA HRM, you're doing those four core modules. You're then doing the two HRM modules, contemporary HRM and HRM in international contacts. So that's 40 uh, credits that, that are dedicated to HRM. Then you're doing that project, which is another 40 credits. So 80 credits out of that 180, uh, 180 credits total are is the specialism. So you can see why it is, it is impossible to do two specialisms in the one MBA. Okay, and um, a question from Akin Bolude with regards to the fees. Um, Akin Bolude's question, and I'll answer it, is, is regarding fees. For example, do I happen to pay anything out besides what I have been given? Um, and the question, uh, the answer to that is no, you don't have it to pay anything else. Um, whatever your Stafford consultant has given you in terms of the fee structure, that is what you will be paying throughout the duration of your studies. Uh -huh no additional fees at all okay um, and a follow-up question do I get a student ID card even though I am an online distance learning student that is a good question I'm, I don't actually know I think you, you should get an, uh, an ID card what we are using um, nowadays we're actually phasing out the uh, the uh, traditional ID cards or the plastic ID cards like the credit cards and we're moving towards an online ID card um, so we have a Napier app, so it's called My Napier, uh, and on that you would get your student ID. So that is used um, in lieu of the actual physical card. So you would definitely have access to that. I don't think you have access to a plastic card because we are, as I said, phasing those out anyway, um, just for environmental reasons as, as well as, as, as practical reasons. You would, you should um, get access to that uh, e-card, that uh, electronic card on your My Napier app. Okay, fantastic. And uh, this is a very interesting question. Um, what in your opinion, or in your opinion, is this MBA really valid? And I use this term loosely, and the reason why I'm asking this is because traditional MBAs have examinations, whereas this MBA has assignments. So what is the validity of your MBA? Yeah, and that's that's a great question, actually, and a very interesting question. And this kind of this move towards um, a continuous assessment, so looking at assessment in in terms of assignments throughout the trimester rather than this end of module examination, really reflects a kind of shift in thinking with regards to pedagogy and assessment, and thinking about teaching and learning in general. So we kind of modern thinkers when it comes to pedagogy have realized that having these end of term examination doesn't really test students knowledge to the degree that it wants to 
So, you know, thinking back to my own undergraduate degree, which is in biomedical science, surprisingly, um, you know, I, I would cram for an exam. I would learn all about, for example, immunology and viruses and, and bacteria and things like that. And then within a couple of days afterwards, I would, I would after the exam, I would have forgotten everything, you know. So instead of doing something like that, where you're expected to cram for an end of a, end of a term uh, exam, we expect you to learn the material and actually be able to use that similarly to how you would use that in a workplace. Nobody is going to test you in an exam in a workplace. Instead, they're going to expect you to be able to use the material that you already have in your head uh, to apply it and to analyze it, to critically uh, discuss it. Um, and that really reflects the assessments within this, uh, within this uh, MBA as well. So uh, we're moving away from that cramming that end of kind of um, term exams towards this more rich, fuller assessment that really um, tests your knowledge in a different way and requires you to critically think about it rather than just recalling facts. So that's the reason for our assessment strategy. Excellent, good. Okay, and is it possible to start my program online and then once COVID um, hopefully has disappeared, I can then transfer to the campus at the university? Is that possible? So unfortunately, that's not possible because we do have an MBA, uh, an in-person MBA, so an offline MBA, as we you could call it. Um, but the structure of that is somewhat different. They are kind of two complete diff completely different programs. So that's the reason why we couldn't actually have someone from the global online MBA then join the the offline or the in-person MBA, and it wouldn't actually work out in terms of the credit structure, in terms of the structure of the program. So unfortunately, not. Okay, and uh, how flexible are you to provide extensions on assignments uh, due to unforeseen circumstances? Yeah, again, just like I was talking about the extenuating circumstances when it comes to failing assignments. So if you fail an assignment and it is because of something like stress to do with COVID or you've got COVID or, you know, you have had a bereavement, unfortunately, or there's been some work stress, uh, then you can apply for retrospective extenuating circumstances where you think, well, I didn't really do so well on that assessment because um, of all the stress. I'm going to have a conversation. I'm going to apply for extenuating circumstances retrospectively so after the fact after you, you you completed the assessment and gotten the mark um if you need an extension so if you need extenuating circumstances extensions before you're actually submitting that assessment we absolutely will have a, that conversation with you we are flexible when it comes to extenuating circumstances uh, with regards to extensions on assessments um you know i have students ask me this all the time it is usually no problem um, to get an extension, for example, of 10 working days. We will allow any module leader um, of their own decision making and their own um, whatever they, they think in terms of their own confidence, uh, they can offer you 10 working day extensions. So in reality, a two week extension on any assessment um, with regards to any extenuating circumstances you might have. If you require more than a two week extension, um, then we can also have that conversation as well. Uh, and we, um, we are then bound by in terms of the program board that I, that I mentioned earlier, and um, we will have to have that, those marks in by a certain deadline, but we will have that conversation with you certainly. We are quite flexible in that respect. Okay, fantastic. And I have a last comment from Lydia, and I am actually smiling because this is a lovely comment uh, for you, Dr. Kieran. Um, and her comment is, I really enjoy listening to you, and you really made this very, very exciting for me. Will you be teaching on all the subjects? And I hope you do, because I'd love to join and have you as my tutor. And that's the last <laughs> comment from Lydia. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lydia. Thank you very much. Um, I will be teaching on some of these modules, but you will definitely be hearing more from me as, as program leader, um, and you will be seeing my face pop up every now and again. So thank you very much for that. Excellent. Thank you very much, everyone. It was great having you. Lovely questions. Again, thank you so much, Dr. Kieran, for joining us this evening. Lovely to see you. And as Dr. Kieran has said, uh, we are currently accepting applications for the May intake. Um, you're looking at about uh, the 1st of May for application deadline. It's a very, very popular program. Don't want you to miss out uh, and secure your place. So please do get in touch with us and let's get those applications into the unit. University. Thank you very much, everyone, and have a fantastic evening. Goodbye. Thank you, Thank you Helen. See you, everyone.